Всім добрий вечір. Я рада вітати усіх наших глядачів на Public Talk. Індивідуальний стиль, як його знайти, де шукати натхнення та як не робити вторинний продукт режисера і переможця Fashion Film Festival 2019 Павла Буряка і режисера переможця Fashion Film Festival 2018 Джордана Блейді. Public Talk буде проходити англійською мовою. So let's I'm happy to introduce our speakers, Jordan Blady and Pavel Burak. Pavel is a film, music, video and TV commercial director. Jordan is a director living and working between Los Angeles and Paris. Uh, I really thank you both for joining us. It's a great pleasure to have a discussion with two winners of Fashion Film Festival Kiev. And I hope that this discussion will be useful for future participants who are watching us. Uh, competition program is open for application until until July 1st. So let's start. Uh, how are you guys? <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty good. Okay. Uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. So uh, let's start. How did you meet and start collaborating? How did your career begin? Jordan, Pasha? Uh, yeah. How did we meet? I, uh, I I just I was living in in Berlin at the time, and I just finished um, I finished shooting uh, my first feature film, and I really wanted to do a fashion film in Ukraine. I got this idea earlier in the year, and uh, I was waiting to finish the feature shooting so I could go to Ukraine and do this. And I had no idea who to contact. Uh, what I wrote as many people as possible uh, and, and a friend of mine connected me to another producer and I came to Ukraine and she was very excited and, and, and very cool and she was like oh I can't wait to do this project I, I think and then I got there and then she's like I'm not going to do your project and I was like oh okay <laughs> like well and then she's like but you have to meet this guy, Pasha. He's gonna love it. And uh, and then we met and then and then that was it. And then and then the rest is the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was super funny. I mean, it was the first time in Ukraine, right? It was my second. It was the second. Okay. It was much my first time in Ukraine was not was not was very different than my second time. First time in Ukraine was very strange. I just came as completely as a tourist. I didn't know anyone, and it was uh, it was it was a very weird, very weird yeah. experience. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I remember the date was so cool. Uh, I, Daria, Daria, our friend, she's all, she as well producer in Kiev uh, industry production industry, and uh, uh, so yeah, we just uh, connected with her, and then we met each other. Yeah, basically it was so funny. We met in a very weird place <laughs> with the, you said that it was like excellent food. And then in a few days, he was like, oh my God, my stomach <laughs> it was like, oh, right. Yeah. So this is, uh, I had this thing with, with the water where I didn't know you can't drink the water Yeah. and nobody told me I couldn't drink the water. So I was just drinking it. I, I I've been to I've been to Kiev I think I don't know maybe over ten times now I'm not sure I've been a bunch of times but for the first like six or eight times every time I came I drank the water and I got sick and I was trying to figure out like what restaurant was making me sick yeah and yeah, one day I told I Pasha that. and I was like I was like oh the water and he was like you're drinking the water and I was like <laughs> what you didn't tell me I can't drink the water. Uh, yeah, okay, I mean, guys, and uh, what are your joint projects? <laughs> what, sorry? What, sorry? What, what are your joint, joint program, projects, sorry? Uh, how did your cooperation with the Ukrainian designers come about? Um, I, the first one, when I first came, I wrote, um, I wrote to a couple of designers, one of them being Ksenia. It just, I just, um, did some research on, on online and, and saw like uh, who was like the coolest and who was the most exciting and um i, I loved what Xenia was doing and they met with me 
and um, they were super nice and really supportive. But I remember Anton thought I was crazy. Um, and he told me later, he was like, I really thought you were a, a crazy person. Like, like this weird, like Westerner who came over who like wanted to make this like fashion film. And he's like, I, I wasn't sure if I could trust you because you seemed like insane. <laughs> Uh, but ultimately he was happy that we would work together, but uh, it was funny because after he told me that story, looking back, I can, I can like, you know, I can see his face looking at me in those early days, like looking at me like I'm, you know, not. Did, a... you, know, did you know, by the way, that Anton, we're talking about Anton Schneider, uh, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, like, you know, that uh, you knew that he's a part of a big part of brand, right? Before, or like it was more more surprise for you. And uh, actually, he worked in huge companies as our either art director in, uh, in 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 big agencies. Yeah, I I, be I became aware of that later. I didn't really know. I mean, I really came into the whole thing not knowing anything. Um, I just, you know, like we've talked about before. Like I don't I don't really know that much about fashion. I just mm -hmm. kind of just. If, if I like what it looks like, if I like the aesthetics and like if the people are uh, intelligent and have a nice philosophy behind their brand, like I want to work with them because that's, um, that makes for a really rich and exciting collaboration. And that was definitely, the case. That's, that's been the case with everyone, but that was certainly the case with, with uh, Anton and Xenia. Okay. Yeah. Sounds cool. It was, okay. uh, it was Grisha's guide film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Actually, it was. Yeah, it was our first, as we said, as we said before. And for me, honestly, it was as well the first like experience working on Ukrainian uh, fashion brands. And I guess from there, I also started to 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 do something with fashion. So yeah, Jordan was a great connection for all of us. Cool. That was fun, and you know what? With with that script, that with that thing, I actually I written a script before, and I gave it to Anton, and Anton didn't like it, and he was like, "Oh, this is not what we're about." And I was really, at first, I was really upset, and then he had he had an idea. He wanted to do like very much like a fake, like a fake documentary um, that I didn't want to do, and then yeah. like Grisha's guide ended up being sort of like the happy medium between the thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the idea came up like later, I think the final, I mean, we, I, I think the, the the latest version of idea and script came up as well with the locations and scouting and when, when we just started to uh, search for, for places where what it can be. And uh, yeah, I mean. Definitely, I mean, we were writing, I mean, I remember I stayed up really really late the night before we shot i was up my my, oh, yeah. st my stomach was totally messed up i had no idea what we were doing i think i didn't go to bed till like four in the morning until i like, yeah, 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 I remember out, that. yeah what like how it was gonna work and then at some point i figured out i don't know one of the jokes or something and then yeah okay and how did you meet anton Velinsky and made make <laughs> Blinsky, I think I met him in Paris or something. Mm -hmm. I think, I, right? I, I don't remember where I first met Anton Blinsky. Um, but I, I see him, he's, I just see him a lot because I've been based mostly in Paris for the past two years. And I would see him around and Pasha's definitely introduced me to him before. And yeah, uh, I knew him time years ago. Yeah, he just, he exists in my memories. I can't remember the first time that, that I met him, but the way we came to, to do this last one, how did this work? I, I ran into him in Paris and I was like, oh, it'd be cool to work with Anton. And then you ran into him on the street, Pasha? Yeah, it was like super funny. Yeah, yeah, it was super funny story. I remember how Jordan talked, uh, to told me the story about uh, Paris uh he was like i don't know it was a show right or something uh, of anton in paris and so. uh you told me the story oh i saw this guy like you know and uh 
yeah, we just said, you said, you said hi to him and like <laughs> someone introduced you to each other, but uh, like, and then Jordan told, told me that story. I said, what's it like, what, like Anton? Yeah, sure, I know him. Cause like, I ha I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't know him like well and close, like we wasn't close friends and we're still not close, but I remember that, that time. And I said, oh yeah, Anton, like that's, that's, that's a cool guy. I, I mean, we can try to, to connect with him. And it was a funny story. The next day, he was just uh, walking on the street and uh, we just stopped for a while. I saw a friend and in this moment, like, like in few seconds, Anton was passing, uh, riding bicycle uh passing by us and like i said hey anton and uh he said hey like he stopped and uh it was like this situation you know we just talked before the day before and then i met him uh i mean i wrote him in facebook but this meeting this meeting was super uh surprising for for us yeah and then we just talked about the project and uh mm -hmm. after you know what happened you, you know what I remember very quickly. I remember now. I remember when we were in Georgia when we were shooting. We were shooting from beyond in, in Georgia. Yeah. Um, for for Gola Damien, uh, we were in the Chaos Concept Store, uh, which is in the Stamba Hotel, and they had all of these Anton Belinsky clothes. And that was the first time I think where I got introduced to like his style, which I lo like. I love. I love his work and. Um, that I think was the first time that like we really talked about it. It was the first time we were in like the same room with his clothing, like looking at it. And yeah. the Chaos Concept Tour store was talking about how cool, like he's a great designer and they're friends with him. And I think I think that was probably the first place, like uh, yeah. aesthetically, we got like introduced. Yeah, yeah, like, mind so. Oh, yeah. Okay, so guys, let's let's watch your films, your works. Uh, you have talked about, told about, talking about Grisha's Guide, Laval, and Skater's Paradise, Born 2. Grisha's Guide for Xenia Schneider, Laval for Anton Belinsky, and Born 2 for Pustavit. And then we will talk. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, uh, so, let's video, and then we'll start the conversation. И мы в доме кино. Не подскажешь, во сколько фильм начинается? Что? Я вот здесь делился очень часто. Моя мать очень любила это место. Здесь были раньше концерты, вечеринки, мероприятия, какие-то день рождения знакомых. И я помню, здесь детства...
Sorry for a technical problem. Something went wrong. I'm really sorry. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay, Pasha, please tell us about your work for Pustovit. You work as a director, as I know. Because with Jordan, you work as a producer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, we work with Jordan mostly as duo, like director and producer, and I did the producer job, uh, also creative producing, like whatever you can call it. Um, yeah, we also did with him one film in Georgia. Uh, we like the name of it is From Beyond for Golo Damian. I also produced it with uh, uh, with my company and the company, our ser service company, our partners, colleagues in Georgia. Um, yeah, and then I did film for Ukrainian as well, designer, support with Pustavit. I mean, it's pretty easy story about the skateboarding guy, um, the guy who plays sax, sax, saxophone. Um, I mean, he's, it was like really interesting uh, connection between these two things. And uh, um, I think this is like really, um, I mean, it's a kind of unique scene when, and it's, it, you know, like if the previous films we did with Jordan more, it was more like um, planned story. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and uh, this story with uh, Skater's Paradise, it was more documentary and freestyle scene. I mean, it has like key, key points in story, but uh yeah it, it was more documentary fashion docu documentary i even can't name it fashion um but yeah somehow it's it's somehow fashion so yeah that's it we shoot on film in barcelona sunny barcelona i i also produced it so and as well edited so yeah okay pasha i have a question for you uh, what do you like more, act as a producer or as a director? Um, honestly, saying I, I I found both things. Like actually working with Jordan, I found producing really interesting, and uh, it was super useful for me and uh, uh, really a, an adventure, I can say, because I was like, I mean, I started to do it like before we, I met Jordan, but. I think in projects with Jordan, uh, I looked on this scene, um, at the scene as producing from another side, uh, and uh, this is the key point. So I think both producing and directing is very useful and very interesting uh, jobs because uh, uh, producing helping to understand, like I mean, directing help helps me to understand more uh, directors, you know, uh, and uh, while I'm producing, I can. I can really know what they're thinking about and uh, uh, somehow like maybe help with with something, you know. I mean, Jordan as well, producer. Uh, I mean, he's, he's mostly director, but he's producing his films as well. So, uh, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's a common scene for Hollywood, I think, right? When like people doing a lot of things, they're producing big directors, producing their films and like as Jordan, he's produ he produced like his feature film. Um, so I think like it's super useful. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I, Jordan, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say like, I, I, I haven't been doing that much producing because I haven't been, um, I haven't been back in, in the States. Um, I am producing the stuff from, from, you know, all the films I am producing as well, but you know, if I'm in a place like Ukraine, it's like I can't make a project without a pro yeah, without yeah. a producer like 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 Pasha. But if Pasha were to come make a film in the States, I could be a much more uh, effective producer. Um, 
you know, yeah. I, I, I can't really do much except be an executive producer when I'm in like Paris or Ukraine or, or Georgia, but you know, I'm trying to get Pasha to, to come here and, and I, uh, I think, I don't know if Pasha said this exactly, but I think he started to get into this in terms of like doing all of the things in, in, in the States, we'd call it wearing, wearing many hats, wearing a bunch of different hats in, in terms yeah, of yeah. production. It's every, yeah, every, every part of it is, is so important, you know, to see every aspect of filmmaking. Uh, it helps you get better at each, at each job, you know, so you can be better. It's like, being a producer makes you a better director and directing makes you better a producer and editing makes you better at everything you know yeah yeah true yeah. actually yeah, yeah. It's, that's super true i was thinking about editing like editing is really super useful for directing like as it's a huge part of totally of, of this job absolutely yeah so i think the yeah. people i mean easy can the editor easy can be a director. I Definitely. mean, in some cases. Okay, thank you for your answers. Uh, the topic of our public talk is how to find a uh, personal style. So uh, I have a question for you both. It's important for creating a true masterpiece to stick, to strike a balance between your own vision and uh, recent trends. So, is there anything that we can see as a stable trend now? Uh, <laughs> I, I was I was talking to Pasha about this before. I don't I don't really I don't really know that much about about trends. You know that there are things. I mean, it, trends trends suck like trends are awful like it, it, especially in a post internet world trends are even worse because trends spread across the globe so quickly and things become stale faster than ever before you know the the more connectivity we have the faster everything expires and mm -hmm. ceases to be cool you know whatever yeah. it's, it's like there is that logic that like as soon as something becomes mainstream it's it's no longer cool um but if you're trying to make stuff according to trend it's always gonna suck but at the same time you should keep in mind you should you should try to be aware of trends which i'm usually not i'm usually the last <laughs> person to figure out like anything that's happening but you should definitely not be I don't know if you'd agree with this, uh, Pasha, but like you should definitely not be trying to create something because yeah. it's a trend, it, because it will suck. It's yeah. just going to be crap. Yeah, for sure. I think I agree with this statement. And uh, I mean, that's why I think we're working together because we're not following the trends, you know, a lot. And uh, that's why what that's why our films, I think they be, they're a bit different. And uh, I mean, I can't say that they are super different. I mean, they are somehow different, but like, I think they are not trendy. Like they, 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 they are opposite. Like we, I mean, if you want to be trend, if you want to use trends, you should, I mean, you should create trends. This is, this is, this is cool. Uh, and when someone created the trend, I mean, you can follow it for some time, but like in this like super fast growing world, like you should, uh, the trends change like super fast and uh, sometimes like you can't just uh, you can use this trend but it's already gone you know and uh, in this in this case you are looking like uh, somehow looking as an asshole or like a secondhand project you know uh, some, something like that that's my opinion I, I mean, yeah for sure I mean it's it's striving striving to be honest and original is is like it's like the goal of, of the artist right i mean that's what you're always trying to achieve you're trying to be as honest as possible and if you're as honest as possible hopefully you're embarking on something original and then hopefully that you know creates something that even though 
thing. We're still working in the medium of film. So obviously you're going to yeah. have seen it before in some regard. And, sure, sure. Yeah. You know, and there is a, there is like a, a universal consciousness that we're all kind of a part of. Like, but maybe if you're really honest and, and, and you try really hard, you might be able to do something just a little different. And that's like, yeah. That's what we're all hoping for, right? And I, I, I'll, I'll say, I'll give like one little example because I think this is important and this is definitely a trend that I can see. You know, everybody's shooting on film again, right? And that's cool. Like I've been shooting the last few projects I've shot on film. Uh, they're not released yet. Uh, Le Ball is shot on film, but I yeah, Le Ball, more. The first, and the first in film for you, right? Exactly. It's the first time shooting in film since like film school. Um, mm -hmm. And it's great yeah. because I, I love film. I love the texture of film. And even when I was shooting digitally, and I'm sure I will again, I was always trying to, you know, when I first started working with, with Christian Huck that we shot Grisha's Guide with and From Beyond, we were always trying to make the digital picture look more filmic, right? And now everyone's shooting on film, which is cool, right? Except that everybody is now shooting on film very quickly and it's becoming very trendy and soon yeah. it's not going to be it's not going to be interesting anymore because everything is going to have so much the same look you know um and that scares me like that it doesn't scare me but it's like it's it's kind of um i don't know i don't know i, I don't i don't i don't love that i don't love that uh, i can add something yes. about the film because it's also about the trend um you know I guess working with film is like uh purpose of working with film is not like the purpose of, like uh it's more if you work with film just to have a style this the, the the look of film uh and you don't have nothing inside that doesn't make sense of course like yeah like film there are a lot of films which are in Cannes and in a lot of big festivals you know and they're 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 sh they're shot on they are shot on, on film like 35 millimeters 16 but they're really 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 strong and uh now in commercials as well and in in fashion films we see a lot of projects should shot on film and uh this is more because of the just look of right. the film you know and not just mm -hmm. the, because it has some depth or uh another approach or something from this point of view for sure, and and just just to add to that point, like one more thing that that I forgot to mention, what is a good a really good positive aspect of working with film is it does force you to make choices that people working digitally were not making before because you just you just don't have that much time and money. Like every shot is money, and you're working yeah. with limited stock. And I think it is really good to put pressure on filmmakers to think more about what they're shooting and and consider more about like you know that's that's one of the things that um you know being an editor uh comes into play because like the more you can shoot to edit the more effective you're going to shoot when you're shooting with film because it's such a limited um yeah uh, uh, the process I mean, in which you're shooting is it's more limited than you would be with like digital you know can, can you say i was actually interested and was about to ask you uh does it affect somehow to your last project which is not released which you did in georgia um the last one uh like doing it on film like um did it give you some i don't know new opportunities or some new feelings during the process during the pre-production and production like how or post-production i mean how how does it um uh, how does it work for you how, do, how does it work for you now i, I would say that like the, the thing with uh, a little bit like i was saying before I, I just made a kind of a short a short documentary profile in, in georgia which also yeah. qualifies as a fashion piece and we shot for three days and um Mm, I mean, comparing but, with digital, right? I mean, this is my question. I, I love, I love that it forces you to really, really think out your project before you shoot. Um, it forces you, I think, to do even more pre-production than you would before. And I guess I'm, I'm someone that thinks you should try. I love improvisation, but 
I really think these projects have to be pretty well conceived before you start, you know, shooting your first second. Um, and shooting on film, I think, forces you to think about the project even more, about how it's going to look in the edit. And then yes. also, I'll say, like, I mean, I love film, and I think film tells the truth more than digital does. And if you're shooting anything that's even remotely documentary, it's it's very nice to see, like, a grainy, properly exposed, like, film emulsion, like, it's it's yeah. it's just there's something just really nice and and Born Two is like this right like it's it's just yeah. nice to see someone talk about themselves on film it's it's just beautiful it just it feels yeah it feels like more different. real more yeah, real it does yeah. it really does somehow, feel more real somehow somehow definitely yeah. I mean definitely. you know but yes yeah sorry yeah. I have a question yeah. Jordan you mentioned modern world and digital and how digital have, has changed modern world and I have a question about social networks and Instagram you know Instagram um, completely changed the way we pursue visual content it's like a huge mood board of ideas references etc right. so um, how do you think how Instagram changed the way uh the way you shot uh you shot films and the creative method in general i i'm not a huge i'm not a huge fan of instagram <laughs> i don't i don't i don't really like uh uh i'm not going to get too deeply into the philosophy of instagram and, and why i don't like it and and why i think it's it's done harm to our culture mm -hmm. um i can't say that it's really done anything to change my work aesthetically. But I do think that Instagram has played a really huge part, just as, a, just as, as another iteration of the internet in terms of uh, shortening our attention spans. Um, and I think about that all the time when I'm making film, uh, whether it's like thinking about a feature or short stuff especially i i'm always so scared um about the attention span of my audience and how much they can actually pay attention um and that is a direct uh, that's directly related to instagram and you know i feel like i'm making content for generations or for a generation i don't really understand that well because I'm, I'm getting older and like I'm really detached and you know I look at Instagram and there's all this stuff I don't even like TikTok like I don't even know what fucking TikTok is but I know that it's moving really quickly and people are watching it for like a few seconds and being entertained and so I, I do my best to incorporate that into whatever I'm doing. Okay, thank you for your answer Pasha. What do you think? I mean, I don't know. I, I think that, like, in general, the, like, this this way of, uh, I mean, I can call it way of life because, like, uh, a lot of people just jump and move to online, you know, and uh, uh, the social networks just change, just change a lot for everyone, also for brands. I mean, there are, we are not uh we're not saying something new you know everyone knows it and uh this i mean this is as well a new reality like after coronavirus like the same when the like social networks arrived like everything changed uh the brand work brand position like strategy like everything these things became faster and uh, i mean this is also social media also instagram um I think as the main platform, like it has become a space, you know, where like we form and build some relations, like, you know, and uh, we shape ourselves, we shape identity. We can, we can also, I mean, it's like also art platform where you build your, you know, like your vision and your, your um, style, your mood. So this is like really nice representation of you. And uh, that's really helped like, Somehow, I think it's really helped to sell you for, if talking about again the projects and uh, not just just live because like Instagram became a really like the instrument of uh, like 
sharing your works with the world and uh like i really have some cases where clients like just they were asking for i don't know for websites or email like and some some people who i worked with they didn't have uh they don't have uh any website but they have instagram where where they have everything and uh yeah the clients just watch that super fast on on their phones and that's that can work so i mean definitely yeah this this that's what i think like um mm -hmm. i can say that film like 16 millimeter looks much better on instagram than shooting anamorphically and that's definitely a trend that we've seen go away way fewer people are shooting anamorphically and like 16 millimeter film because of its aspect ratio yeah. looks looks real good on instagram so mm -hmm. i can see why that would be like trending even more so like these days yeah i mean i think this this is like as well like this is square trend right like i mean it was mm -hmm. like like a lot of years it came i mean let's say the hustle blood or big photo brands like when the camera did a square the square photos right i mean that came from there this is this is the main i mean it's like uh old trend right mm -hmm. which became like right, and uh, yeah. Sure. yeah famous again and uh but yeah i agree like also with the uh with with the aspect ratio but you know there is another side of this i think this um uh, the somehow instagram um, i think uh overhelms uh artists a lot uh because like what i can see from my side and like uh looking on myself um uh, i'm like sometimes i think that i'm looking too much for on, on instagram and you like uh in some in in one point of view on, on one hand it's like it's cool that you 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 all all the time you're looking a lot and you're watching a lot you're lo learning a lot but from from another side it's sometimes it's like too much and uh you can i think you can lose somehow uh inner you if you wouldn't uh put a filter on that you know i mean the mm -hmm. another filter not instagram filter yeah so yeah I mean, this is this is somehow can be even unhealthy, so it should be really balanced. Uh, balanced. Uh, okay, thank you for your answer. It's it's uh, this sounds this sounds really nice. So about Instagram, about references, about something, all these photos, uh, videos. Uh, in the modern world, it is impossible to create a one hundred percent original product. So the artist is often inspired by the products from others, uh, from other from, that he has done before. So if there is, if there a line that should not be crossed to lose originality. Um, what, what, I'm sorry. The the question is 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 there? The question is okay. Okay, I I I mean, uh, there are so. It is very hard to create 100% original product because sure. just because uh, just because so many people, so many artists uh, done something, done done did did okay did did uh, work before. So sure, it's hard to yeah. So uh where is um, a line that should not be crossed to lose originality how not to lose originality you mean how not to, you know you mean how not to copy <laughs> and be uh, no, original yes <laughs> yes 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 maybe i mean it's... i don't know i i don't i don't think i i think that i think that to assume that you can work in a medium that has existed for a long time with like so many great artists participating. And I think it's, it's, it's insane to think that there's even a chance you're going to be purely original. I mean, there's, there's no way. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people define, I've heard art defined as just, um, it's a dialogue. 
like you have a the work that you're creating is a dialogue with the past you know a dialogue with the with the past works that have been created so even though you are striving for originality you know uh, human beings i mean we're not we're not really that clever anyways <laughs> i mean it's no matter what you're creating but, but we don't have to be like what we're creating like uh, our psychological makeup is you know it's 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 a summation like it's a it's a combination of all of our influences that we've taken in you know uh our entire lives and that's like film that's painting and and conversations and music and and whatever and you know your interpretation of that uh again if it's if it's honest you know if you're being honest with yourself and you're interpreting those feelings you know um uh, as best you can then you're going to have an original interpretation and output but that output cannot be original on its own because it is just just by by the fact of what it is is a combination of all things that you've taken in if that makes, i know it's kind of a confusing answer but i, I yeah. hope that makes sense I, yeah i mean i have a question for you because like it's really interesting uh like let's let's i mean let's imagine the let's let's talk like a short shortly about the hip-hop or rap scene you know and uh I mean, it's always a part of it's it's a huge part of industry and uh, and uh, music industry and uh, music videos industry, and uh, I mean, in this world, like there are a lot of things which are super similar, and uh, mm -hmm. even lyrics and even beats and even I mean music like that's that's actually um, this also became a trend again. Like you know, I mean, it was it was like popular like always but nowadays like there are like too much of this stuff and people are coping 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 and uh living with, with this stuff you know and uh i mean I, we're, we're risking we're risking getting into a much more complex philosophical debate of, <laughs> of like what no but really like about like what work is and what and what audiences actually want, you know, do audiences actually want originality or do they just want something familiar that looks a little different? You know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a, it's a very complicated topic because I but mean, think, but mostly you think like the audience, we, we, what, which, which audience we have, I mean, generally globally, because there are a lot of fast growing products, you know, which like easy right. productive, you know, and, uh, like they're doing stuff like in in few days and they drop it to iTunes or online shop oh, sorry uh, online shop like whatever you know and they sell it and uh, I'm not sure that like the quality of this product is like um, good one right mm. can you give me like an example I'm not I'm not exactly sure what you're what you're talking about I mean this is about also about the music or rap music Mm. Like there are a lot of like, uh, for my opinion, low quality stuff. Also, clothes. I, like, I can't. Know. I can't really speak. The uh, I really I loved. My days of being a huge rap fan were more like in the '90s when I was growing up, and yeah, some of the stuff in the early aughts. And it's not like I don't still love rap music. I just, I mean, I'm 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 closer to forty than I am thirty. I don't know what's going on in music in any regard. I listen to like ambient music and I was talking with my girlfriend yesterday. I listen to like um, white noise <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Like I just like static. Like I barely, I barely listen to, to music anymore. I, we're getting off topic, but in, in terms of, um, I, I can't really speak to. Uh, yeah. To, to I mean, well, music. like just to, to have some conclusion, I think like you just, I agree with you. Like, um uh, you should be really um uh, you should believe what what you do and uh it should be um truth right in what what you do like you should you should you should make true things that's it what you, what what is inside of you that's it i mean and sure inspiration like everywhere like 
I, I, I just, like you said, like films, books, like art, like music for sure. I honestly got, uh, uh, got, got that I, I'm uh, somehow I, I get inspiration from just people around, like, you know, about from situations around. This is like you just looking around and uh, sitting on bench in the park or, or I don't know, like in this, like on the beach and you're just looking looking around and uh i think this is also great inspiration for and nature this is a huge inspiration mm -hmm. like in, uh, in is a mix a huge mix of everything sure sure okay. I, I guess it, what what, what I'll, I'll say like one final point that, that pasha just like made me think of it's i can speak to to writing film and coming up with films and stuff it's like um every story has been told already right uh, there are only a few ways to tell a story. Uh, human beings are storytellers by nature. Uh, you're not going to tell a new story. What's original about the story that you tell, as Pasha was just saying, it's it's your honest interpretation. You know, like it's going to be your spin on it, and that's that's what everyone is always looking for. It's the same story, but your perspective is the only thing that makes it interesting. And being in touch with that, whether that's nature or music, whatever, whatever brings you closer to that feeling and the ability to get that, that story out honestly from your perspective and knowing who you are, that's, that's what makes something original. Yeah. Or, or, or feeling original. Feeling, yeah. You know. Okay, uh, be original here. and uh, uh, not pretend to be original <laughs> yeah don't fa don't fake it because no matter yeah, what it is it. no matter what medium you're working in even uh, okay. even if somebody doesn't know anything about the art they will be able to feel that it's fake they'll know okay what about what about the quote fake it till you make it you know it's very common to definitely do. definitely do that <laughs> <laughs> definitely do no really that's super that's super important but that's not about that's not about um not about art that's not about the quality of your work that's more of a in in, in america at least that's more of a a business technique because yeah people you're dealing as as a as any kind of artist you have to deal with like the masses and the masses don't give a shit about you the masses do what they're told. You know, if we're speaking very generally, like people don't care about, this is, this is such a general example, but like people don't care about your work until it's curated in a way that people are told to care about it, right? So like I can make uh, I, Grisha's guide, whatever. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a nice video, but until Nowness put it out, Mm -hmm. that's what gave it its audience and that's what connected that work to people and then people cared about it that doesn't mean the quality of the work is is better or worse the, the quality is the same the film yeah, was the same before it came out on notice and the quality was the same after it came out on notice but the way that it connected with the audience that's that's the thing and in that same respect you faking like being uh you know this 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 kind of competent, uh, 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 confident, and and knowing that you're a director, or knowing that you're like a good painter, like people will respond to that, and it will help get your work out there. And if your work is shit, it doesn't matter. Your work's always going to be shit. But if your work is good, it might actually help your good work get to a larger audience. That's 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 how I think of that saying. Yeah, same for festivals actually. Like with the Grisha's Guide, we get. I mean, I don't. I, I can't remember if it like we get the get to the festivals before now or so after. I mean, it was I after. think. I mean, your film first film. I mean, I wasn't known as like six years ago with another film which I produced, like with two films actually, and uh, you also was with the films. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Lali. Sorry, I can't. I really can't. Uh, uh, syllable, yeah, syllables. Yeah, syllables. yeah. The first thing I shot with Christian was on that is from like a, a few years before. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like I don't know. It's not. Um, 
you know this it's not um it's not the main point like as you said before i mean just yeah it it, it give you some benefits after but i think that like grisha also like you can't win you can't win i mean it's like super super um easy answer you can't win festival i guess if you have if you have no story or this story is not good you know uh that's it okay thank you i have a message that we have fixed our technical problems so let's watch your films <laughs> okay cool <laughs> Очень часто моя мать очень любила это место, здесь были раньше концерты, вечеринки, мероприятия, какие-то день рождения знакомых. И я помню, здесь очень много чего отсюда. Придет, что здесь 670 сидений. И, блин, мне здесь очень нравилось. Сейчас здесь есть только фестивали кино, короткометражек. Бывают показывают классные фильмы. Но самое странное, что здесь это вечера танго по четвергам. И это очень страшная штука. Библиотека имени Вернадского – это самая большая библиотека на территории Украины. Она была построена в период между 1975 и 1989 годом. Это Вернадский, он был философом, общественным деятелем и стал такую науку, как биогеохимия, которая вообще-то по червее землю, но почти его звали эту библиотеку. Вообще-то придумал мне клидовую геометрию. Пушкин и Шевченко были писателями. Менделеев, я не знаю, кто не знает, великий химик. Мечников был биологом. Мы в библиотеке Вернадского, которая является главным научным информационным центром страны, и я недавно открыл здесь для себя новое помещение. Оно раньше было только гуманитарным, сейчас оно техническое, здесь офигенный свет. Здесь ровно 70 люков, которые являются энергосбережением в какой-то степени, и при этом здесь очень классно. Не подскажешь книгу? на территории одного из самых красивых мест для воркаута в Киеве. Это зал под открытым небом на гидропарке. И он был построен между 65 и 68 годом. И при заселился большая часть киевлян во время летних периодов. Сможешь страховать? большим крытым рынком в Европе. Именно здесь я покупаю ингредиенты для своего большая махида. А с чего? Может, 
norma chida. Primera vez, por ser el gracias. Okay, so wait a minute. I will ask about the next film. Are we back? Well, I guess yes. we're waiting for next film, right? Uh, yes, I'm waiting for cool. the answer. I think it will be in a second. Cool. That was Grisha's guide. Yeah. The next one will be Le Val by and for Anton Belinsky. Okay. Mm -hmm. Мне нужно выйти. Okay, it's this very cool movie. Actually, this is uh, this is super funny project. I I don't know, like like yes. always when I, when we are watching that and during uh, during the period when we was doing that, it was like super fun. I don't know, like oh, the story about Adiesta. Oh my god, yeah, we can talk about that. Okay, yeah. Sound is recording. Bye. Take one. 
была зима, просто шел с полевой. И в какой-то момент у меня просто в поле зрения появляется какая-то куча лаве. Вот просто лежит в сухой куча лаве. какие-то на руке, там, мы их срывали. Ну, короче, месяц где-то у нас полежали эти деньги, и я на какой-то момент мне задал такой вопрос. Ты понимаешь, что если эти деньги пришли к нам, вот таким образом, то ими нужно поделиться. Потому что у меня были сухие И где-то осталось 1500, тогда я купил 1500 тысяч, которые успели. Ну, вот как-то потом, да, пришлось купить. Super nice review. About, <laughs> I have a question about this work for Anton Belinsky. Uh, it's inspired by, you know, um, this movies from the Soviet movies. Was it, um, Jordan, what do you think, where did you get inspiration for this? Because you are from USA. Right. <clears throat> Uh, where did I get inspiration? I, um, how did that happen? I, I guess, I guess like I was, I was on an internet, I was on an internet in an internet wormhole one day and I, I started to, to discover like Soviet pop and that was a very exciting day for me I, I don't know I just like I, I it's I love the music so much I think that the whole this whole story kind of came out of um, yeah, from you from music I guess and from film definitely like there is there was oh right 
Yeah. You oh, wow. oh my God. Right. Yeah. Sorry. No, I, my memory is really going in my old age. There was, there was, I, I had a totally different idea from something else. It, it was always music based, but I was getting, I think there was, um, I was really into this like uh, 70s Italian disco thing and, and this mood of just like a really, really fun um, dance party from another era. So I was really into like 70s disco. And then we started talking to Anton Belinsky and we we're like, oh, why don't we do it for this? And it's like, well, he didn't really care so much about disco, but he wanted to do something Ukrainian. And then I started getting into Soviet pop and I was yeah, yeah, yeah. wow, like what is what is this? Nobody knows that stuff here um, at all. I was completely blown away. So much so that like, you know, the whole video kind of came out of that. Uh, similar process, like I came to Ukraine, Pasha and I, we, we looked at all these different locations. We actually were going to shoot it in Odessa. The whole thing was supposed to take place on a boat. A super um, funny story, like with the with an old shitty boat, you know. That's, oh, man. Uh, right. And, uh, this is this is the only boat where actually it was super fun to visit all that places with the snakes museum with the snakes. So karaoke bar, oh, yeah. Duke, Duke. Everyone who was in Odessa know that that's that place. But yeah, as well, we was digging on that kind of places like trashy places and and somehow maybe in even ugly places, but um, yeah. And Anton actually wanted to do Ukrainian Ukrainian disco, like in Ukrainian right. uh, village right. club, you remember? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so exactly. That, was, that was something like that. So yeah, and we went, we scouted, we, scout, we scouted a lot in Odessa and then we returned to Kiev and understood that. That, yeah, I, man, that, um, that story. I, yeah, that story is, yeah. So sometimes like, you know, the decisions came up uh, uh, and actually it was useful because we visited we visited this place before the urine we, we was doing the Grisha's Guide and uh, it just pumped, right. in, it pumped in from, from that time, you know, in our mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Jordan remembered that and he's like- I love, I love that this, location. Yeah. Because our producer Kaita, they went there to see that again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that, not, was not, that was crazy. And and yeah, and yeah that that whole film is like it's it's not even it's supposed to be more allegorical than anything. It's just there's no there's not really supposed to be any reality. It's just like it's like reality and fantasy. And it's not supposed to really have any kind of definitive reality. It's just these like opposites and, and indulging fantasy and, and kind of set in uh, the, the world of this like imagined Soviet pop era, but obviously the clothes are contemporary. Uh, and I, I'm not, I'm not done with Soviet pop either. Like, Pasha and I are starting to put together a film, like a new feature and, and that also I love this music so much. I feel like I've just begun my journey into like yeah. exploring Soviet pop. I love so, the movie. Yeah, so you find inspiration accidentally and unexpectedly. Sure, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely. Great. Yeah. It's great key, I think. It's Absolutely. Okay, about about um, about new impressions. Uh, due to the corona, uh, the borders are closed. So we can't move to another countries and get new uh, impressions and change our routine, our routine. But it's very important for inspiration. And um, what do you think? How we can um, get inspiration now because of this situation? Use use Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it, oh yeah, it sucks. What do you it's it sucks and it sucks a lot for me because. Like, I feel like everything I do has only, the stuff that I like has only to do with like this idea of exploring other places. Um, but, but I'll say this, like in this time that I've been trapped in Los Angeles, it's, it's been kind of nice because uh, I mean, no matter what, even if we have new, you know, flare ups, Corona is not gonna be, Corona is not going to be the last thing that like humans deal with. It's going to go away. 
and or at least it's going to become manageable at some point in the future and uh, in this time during covid where i've been kind of stuck in los angeles for two months uh, which is a place i don't like that much um it's kind of nice because you're forced to look at yourself and look at your work and i'm always kind of working at a at a, at a very fast pace where i don't I, I'm never caught up on anything. And during this time, I actually get to, I got to caught up, I get to catch up on my editing and finish these projects. And now I have nothing. <laughs> and it, it's, it's good because it's the first time in a really long time. And even though it's scary financially from a creative standpoint, it is nice to have this breather to stop, look at everything and then really consider how you're going to move forward um, when things start to become whatever this new version of normal is going to be. And what do you think? Like, actually, that's a good question for us as well. Uh, you think like that uh, conceptually, like from creative side, like it's it house it's it ha somehow will influence on uh, ideas or. Um, it, ha it somehow can change the way of. I don't know the way people do the projects and uh, what they create, you know? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we can't, there, there's no, there's no event that we don't process that doesn't affect how we do things going forward. I, I can't say exactly how that's going to look, you know, we just have to see, but it's like, you know, it's like uh, when I think about, obviously COVID is, is a, is a huge world problem when I was younger, you know, like September 11th happened and like mm -hmm. films and culture were different after September 11th. Like that was a huge thing that changed the tonality of things. I don't know if you can say exactly how it changed things, you know, because yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's more of an abstract concept. You could definitely get into that, you know, and that's a very long conversation, but events like that, yeah, of course, of course, COVID will change how we make things and think about things. Um, but I don't know how. Yeah, you know, that we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. You know, I think nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, like looking on actually on what designers started to produce and some brands started to make, I mean, according to new collections, I think also it will change a lot the designers world as well mm -hmm. like and for it's totally sure, for sure yeah this is like really and this is really import, important important it has and, already uh, changed yeah it has already changed a lot and uh i mean i'm talking also about the um, uh the materials like which which they will use and like the productive mm -hmm. uh power you know where where to do that and uh, in which country or like Sure, it's effects. I mean, I'm also excited to see like how it can look like according to the wardrobe, you know, how it will change. Like, I think, I don't know, it's just my thoughts, but I think maybe somehow uh, the wardrobe should be more tech wear, uh, like technically, you know, more. Um, and it's also, and it's also a, good, a good direction to, for the concepts. Like you know, for the fashion films, like I'm sure, like this, someone already did something about this topic. Um, so we can just maybe in your festival we will see something about it. <laughs> yes, I hope. Yes, uh, we have a question from our audience. Uh, which authors uh, have affected your uh, your works? I mean some director, some writer, some artist. Boom. <laughs> I mean, this is a good question. Yeah, there's, I mean, of, of course, there isn't just like one. I mean, like I can look at everything I've ever done and I can I can tell you at each moment where I either stole something or each nuance was inspired by a different piece of work. Um, which would be long and boring. Um, Pasha, do you have? I, I have to think. I have to think if there's if there's like Man, the, the, the main authors, the main artists for you, a few. 
I really but like. Don't say Tarkovsky, please. I, I really like um, someone who always comes to mind. I I, I love um, I love Burroughs, American queer writer, very very famous. Obviously, you know yeah. he wrote Naked Lunch, but he wrote a book called Junkie, which is very well known but lesser known. And and you know, for some reason, with my friends, like. I don't know, I find that like maybe half of them have read Junkie or like a quarter of them. I, I love stories of, um, ah, I, I just, I love, that story is so interesting. It, you know, it's about, you know, heroin addiction and, and queerness in New York City during a very different time. And uh, I, I love, I don't know, I, I how do I explain it? He's such, an incredible writer. He's such a he's such a great writer of like basic prose before he, his language became so abstracted and like and experimental when he got to like Naked Lunch and and, and you know his later work. But like Junkie's so it's so pure and um, the way that character the characters struggle in that book. I don't know. It's super interesting to me. I, I love I love struggle um <laughs> you like yeah you like to struggle i love struggle i love addiction um i love i love like like uh, trying to climb up in a, in a society that's completely against you i think these stories are so interesting and and more relevant than ever in like a place like america where everything is so fucked and um you know uh, yeah, can, can you can you name okay like can you name like top five I don't know directors and film or films like which I mean I'm also interested in, like what what do you what what do you watched I mean maybe in twenties early early twenties or nine I don't know. I, oh God, there's I don't that, that's the thing I I have such a weird I have such a weird film palette because I love I love obscure film and I love. I love like Marvel movies. Like I like popcorn. I love like the art of like, like no way. Like, yeah, like I love I love really what I think to be like really smart, like big audience pleasing popcorn movies when they work. And then I love movies that are like for no one. I don't know. I was just rewatching like I was just rewatching the last season of Twin Peaks, um, like mm. Twin Peaks: The Return, which is the third season. Which, as far as I can tell, nobody really likes, um, except for me. <laughs> and I, I love it, and I, I love it in the same way that like Lynch made this movie called Inland Empire that not a lot of people saw. It, it was shot on DV, um, and it's I think it's over three hours long, and it's it's really it's really like inaccessible. Like it's not. You know, he had no, no, he just shot it on DV. It was just him and, and Laura Dern just going around. And then they went to Poland to shoot. And it's like, you're just yeah, kind just of- Yeah, camera and actress, right? Yeah, so, it's like, you're just DVD watching camera. these Crazy. scenes that they came up with the night before. And it's 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 so experimental and it's not for anyone. But like, I, I love it. Like, I love, I love this movie. Like. Like I love early like Harmony Korean stuff. Like obviously like, I love like Gummo and stuff and but I also love Trash Humpers, which is like not really a movie. Yeah, Trash Humpers. It's yeah. just it's just these experimental scenes. I can't they're very important to me. Like I, I love these films. Um I don't know, top five directors. I, I, I don't know. I like I like what everybody likes. I mean P. T. Anderson. I, I love I love this guy, American director, um, I, I don't know who else is good. They're all they're all good. Kubrick's good. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 kind of like like right now I'm rewatching. There's an HBO show called Deadwood that I'm rewatching right now by this guy. This guy David Milch. It's this show about the Wild West, and it's it's awesome. I highly I mean, recommend it. It's pretty randomly like it's it's really random stuff you watch like super um, random. It's super random. Super random, yeah. Very random, like 
but yeah. mostly like you choose you, you choose stuff like which is more uh which which you feel that you need now or like how 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 you choose what what to watch i mean like uh according to the mood or you have like tasks or you're like giving tasks for yourself i don't know okay pasha and what about you what about <laughs> yeah well, anyway, I, I feel like you'll answer but yeah, I, I, you I, can. Don't have, I don't have any good answer for that yeah you can think about it you can tell me later about that uh i don't know i mean i, I had this conversation two weeks before this live with my friend and uh i don't know i really like it can sound a bit cheesy i don't know but i i really like early films of jim jarmusch and uh mm -hmm. like sure. i mean this is the guy who inspired me and i really rewatched few films uh actually on on quarantine i watched like a lot of his films again and uh mm -hmm. Uh, I understood that I like, I love really, I really love slow movie, like, and uh, on opposite, I like fast movies, like as, as Savdi Brothers films, let's say, right? Uh, I mean, it's from you and like, I don't know, like Jim Jarmusch film, like the film uh, Strangers in Paradise, I just looked, I just, just don't know how to name it in English, but yeah, this is Strangers in Paradise. That's, a, that's, a, that's the name in English. Yeah, this is super good movie. Like this is black and white movie. Oh my god, it's so slow about New York, about three people like who traveled around and like actually it's nothing going on there, but it's how somehow keeping you uh watching this film and follow the story and uh yeah, and this that was like his second film uh which is really cool. I mean, it's that's 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 what I really like, and in my memory, also the limits uh, of control. It's super unfamous film of Jarmusch, and uh, I think this very uh, I art direct I like art direction. It's a great art direction in this film. Like really, really a huge part of this film because like there is almost no dialogues, but and it's also slow, sure. Um, mm -hmm. And they should in Spain, like where in 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 Sevilla, Madrid, Barcelona, uh, like the centers of uh, architecture, the great, the the best architecture, for my opinion, uh, in 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 Europe, like the 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 world of Gaudi and mm, um, and other architectures from that time. I mean, it's fun. did you watch permanent? Did you watch permanent vacation? This this is like uh, the first film, like yeah. like permanent vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super also it's super funny. I, I love this movie, but that that it's movie film. is I haven't heard him speak about it, but there are there are obvious parallels to this movie and and Junkie and like Burrow. Like Jarmish loved Burrows and like Permanent Vacation. If you haven't seen it, it's just it's yeah, like a guy. Yeah. It's like a young guy who's like yeah, a drifter. Hot, hot. And it's a post apocalyptic it's like a post apocalyptic, like uh, fictitious war zone, New York that he's just walking around. And it's like it, it's it's it, it, I can't say it's directly influenced by junkie, but like the ties, there's like like jazz music and like having one outfit and this shitty suitcase and going from like place yeah, to yeah, place. Yeah. It's it's like uh I mean, I, I love this stuff too. I love Jarmusch. Like, okay, guys, sorry, but we don't have much time. And yeah, I have sorry. two last questions for you. Uh, the first question sure. is, um, in way, in which ways your creative style is different from, from, mm, from that you had at the beginning of your career. And the next question is, how to get out of creative crisis? <laughs> the second uh, question is like there is no answer for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just con die, yeah. Maybe. even even right now I'm in a creative crisis. <laughs> well, well, welcome to trying to make stuff. You will yeah, always yeah. be in creative crisis, and if you're lucky, some days you won't feel like total shit. That's what I'll say about that. <laughs> and then yeah, my, I, my I work wise, I hope my work is less shitty. I, I don't know. I hope. I hope it's getting better. I, I don't know. 
that's uh i probably won't be able to tell until i'm like on my deathbed right and then you can like look at it all and then you can be like oh it got better and then it got worse and then better i don't know i just i i uh i can't say how it's like different i, I can say that it is really important i think some of my favorite directors i'll try to be very quick some of my favorite directors i mentioned pt anderson uh earlier what I love about about PT is that like he's aware of his own limits as a storyteller and as a writer. So PT Anderson, even though he just like made a new film with an original script that he actually was the cinematographer on as well, he's done a lot of adaptation. Um, and I think it's really important to know that like as a director and a writer, you don't have that many stories to tell um and you have to use your ability to tell other people's stories and then also make it your own as well as theirs like he's done a lot of adaptation kubrick did tons of adaptation you know yeah. woody allen has made a ton of great films but he's made a lot of really shitty films especially in the last part of his career and they're all original works and they all feel like the same thing over and over again and I feel like if, if you know, if Woody Allen, whatever, he has his own process, he's doing what he's doing. But if he were doing more adaptations, I think his work would be way fresher, you know, than just sort of like the, the same thing over and over again. And I hope that I can incorporate that uh, strategy in my own work. So I hope it's getting better and I will, I'll be always thinking about my work in that regard. Um, yeah. What about you, Pasha? uh talking about difference between between yeah i mean i don't know i still figuring that out that's 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 i think that's not the right time to um say that there are huge changes like i think it's still like uh that level when you are i mean you should always you should always uh find the ways tell the stories that you want to tell that's it i mean you it's like all, always research for something and uh from film to film from project to project like i think the best way the the best thing that you can do is like just to do, to search your your original vision you know and uh your your honest thoughts like and uh i think while you're researching you can find the ways how to tell the, the stories in in the best way and uh yeah that that's that's it i mean it's logically when you grow right so uh i hope we are all growing and uh separately and together and uh we'll grow we'll grow more this is like this is the aim <laughs> right mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your answers. It was a big pleasure to talk with you. And thank you very much that you joined to us. Thank you, guys. Oh, thanks, for, thanks for having us. This is yeah, really fun. Thanks it was really nice. Fun. It was cool, call, cool talk. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great evening. Uh, okay. End the day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.